it's wonderful time to worship our Lord, learning from His Word. And in this morning, we have a plenary session. Uh, our speaker in this time is Dr. Alfredo Agustin. He is a professor in New Testament in Ayas Theological Seminary. And the title of his uh, presentation is Discipleship in Luke Acts, Jesus Teaching and Practices Implementation in Luke Acts and Seventh-day Adventist Local Churches in the Philippines today. Um, for the presentation, he has 25 up to 30 minutes and then 10 minutes for questions. So uh, let us pray to start this presentation. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity you give us to keep learning from your Bible, from your word. Help us to understand what Dr. Augustine has prepared for us and give him wisdom, your Holy Spirit upon him so that he can teach us your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, this uh, morning, my topic, as you can see there, discipleship in Luke Acts, uh, Jesus' teachings and practices implementation in Luke Acts. And is the local churches in, in the Philippines today. I would like just to read, and uh, because of uh, time constraints, I just want to have a shortcut. Um, I just highlighted the important uh, paragraphs here. Our introduction, many articles were written by uh, biblical scholars on the theme of uh, discipleship in Mark. Matthew, Luke, and John. And in my service of this literature, it is uh, apparent. I uh, put there the literature in the footnotes that the scholars' analysis focus on the teachings and practices of Jesus on discipleship. But the focus of this paper is uh, more on how the teachings and practices of Jesus uh, on discipleship had been implemented by his followers in Luke Acts. And furthermore, uh, this uh, paper will also show how these teachings and practices of Jesus on discipleship have been being implemented by the Seventh-day Adventist local churches in the Philippines today. And uh, the implementation in the Seventh-day Adventist church today uh, is based on my observation. This paper will answer the following questions. First, what are Jesus' teachings and practices in Luke Acts? Second, how did the disciples or apostles implement Jesus' discipleship teachings and practices in Acts? And number three, how do the HD uh, believers in the Philippines implement Jesus' teachings and practices on discipleship? And the first part, discipleship defined uh, the Greek word matites occurred 72 times. And uh, in the context of its occurrences, in some passages, it means uh, learner, pupil, and disciple. The new one's pupil, apprentice, is evident in Matthew and Luke. And the new one's disciple or adherent is uh, evident in Matthew, Mark, and Luke also. And uh, in Acts. And uh, practically, it is also used for Christians in Acts. In Greek world, outside the New Testament, the noun matites means a learner, a student of Greek customs. And it is applied to a person who spent time with some or someone with a particular expertise 
in order to acquire the latter's uh, practical and theoretical knowledge. And thus, uh, Matites might be an apprentice in a trade, a student of medicine, or a member of a philosophical school. And uh, in, the, in the New Testament, there, uh, Mantano occurred 25 times, word for, uh, the, the verb, uh, including seven times in the pastorals and only six times in the gospels. In many passages, the word reflects the Old Testament concept of Lamad with reference to ascertaining the will of God and learning to direct one's life toward it. And thus, in the New Testament, uh, discipleship, especially Jesus' discipleship, is not only an acquisition of theoretical knowledge, but more importantly, it means an acquisition of skills and development of one's ethical, moral, and spiritual life by one's uh, connection to Jesus and an application or imitation of his teachings and lifestyle. The purpose and theme of Luke has also a significance, has also significance to our study. The purpose of Luke is to write a chronological sequence uh, of what has been fulfilled among them and the distinctive major theme of Luke Acts that uh, scholars point out is the plan of God. Okay, the passages are there, the, the verses to support. And this major theme of Luke is significant as far as the study of discipleship in, in, in Luke is concerned. Luke, as he describes Jesus' ministry, wants to stress that the gospel of salvation should be preached to all kinds of people, even to the poor. Uh, the prisoners, the blind, and the oppressed sectors of the community. And Luke wants also to show that in the ministry of Jesus, the plan of God is the salvation of all flesh. And uh, it does not involve only the spiritual restoration of, the, of uh, humanity, but also the restoration of the society where the rich care for the needs of, the, of their less fortunate neighbors in the community of faith. This was his original plan for Israel. And he wants also to emphasize this once again to the new Israel, that discipleship transcends all classes of men in the society, that all kinds of people, rich and poor, men and women, Jews and Greeks, free and slaves, can be disciples of Jesus. And lastly, discipleship, lastly in this section, we are not done yet. Discipleship does not only involve spiritual restoration, but also physical and social dimensions of individuals here in the Gospel of Luke. And uh, the next section, the call to discipleship, this is about Jesus' practices. It is significant to note that right at the outset of his ministry in Luke, Jesus, as an example to follow, called some men to full-time ministry discipleship. In Luke 5, uh, 1 to 11, here Jesus was teaching in the Sea of Galilee. And, while, uh, and then he stopped. Surprisingly, he stopped speaking and commanded Simon to cast their nets to cast fish. And in my view, as I reflect on this passage, Jesus could, have, could just have called them to be his disciples without performing this miracle. Thus, this uh, paper suggests that this miracle is the Lord's deliberate action in order to show them that if God calls us as his disciples, there is always success in his work, even in an unlikely situation. And furthermore, this is also a sign to prove that he is really the Lord, the Messiah. And that discipleship means following him as Lord. And those who follow him are his willing and loving servants, leaving everything for him. It's in verse 11. It is also significant to note that those whom Jesus called to discipleship were the ones who acknowledged their sinfulness or unworthiness. So here, discipleship means the calling of those who obeyed the command of the master, acknowledging Jesus as the Lord acknowledging the unworthiness and sinfulness and readiness to follow him lovingly and wholeheartedly and reservedly 
to a life of service, and that is saving souls for the kingdom. And another instance in, in Luke uh, that explicitly speaks about a calling or a call to discipleship is in chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. Uh, the call, this is about the call of, uh, of Levi, a tax collector, and also after this, the call of Zacchaeus. Thus, in this context, Christian discipleship in Luke is inclusive. It breaks down the status quo. It welcomes every, even those who were despised by first century uh, Jewish society. Similar event also uh, found in Luke chapter 19. 1 to 10, in addition, the context of the call of Zacchaeus shows that Christian discipleship begins with conversion and experience of salvation. And Luke also pointed out that Jesus spent one whole night in prayer when he was about to make a very crucial uh, decision in discipleship. And we know that in the morning he called his 12 disciples, and also uh, he called them to become uh, apostles. And this event tells us that uh, Christian discipleship involves apostleship, being chosen for a special mission for the master, choosing people for a special mission needs more prayer. And Luke also stress that Matthew... Uh, then Matthew, uh, in Matthew, uh, only, uh, uh, he only stressed dunamis, power. But Jesus, uh, in, in Luke, he also uh, stressed, aside from dunamis, power, uh, Luke uh, also uh, stressed authority, exousia. And it is interesting also to note here that uh, Luke already mentioned that Jesus Teaching has authority, and he has also authority and power over unclean spirit. Now, at this point, there are principles learned. Number one, there in red, prayer is indispensable in choosing disciples. Christian discipleship always involves empowerment, instruction, and training. And number three, Christian disciples who were empowered always return victorious after their uh, mission. Christian discipleship, number four, receives the promise of ultimate <clears throat> reward. And uh, another venue, another avenue, I mean, in Christian discipleship is the involvement of women in the ministry of Jesus. I notice here the picture uh, drawing here. Uh, I haven't found a woman there. Uh, or probably this is not yet complete because... Uh, making disciples, it is the process, you know, it is a process. So Jesus and then uh, he called the men and then the men will call women, will call women and children. So this is a process. Uh, behind, okay, very good. So Luke opened his gospel with, so imagine Luke, in the gospel of Luke, he opened the gospel, his gospel with two prominent women, Elizabeth and Mary. And also after, uh, after that, uh, Anna, a prophetess, also was mentioned there. And at the end of his, of his uh, gospel, uh, also uh, Luke mentioned Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of Jesus, or mother of James, I mean, and several others, were the ones who told the good news of Jesus' resurrection to his 11 disciples. <laughs> but the apostles did not believe their words. And it should be pointed out that in view of the culture of the day, that women were considered as second-class citizens during the time. And were not considered as credible witness. So in legal court, uh, women's witness is not acceptable. But here, Luke emphasized that uh, women could be witnesses for Jesus. And Luke emphasized that in God's kingdom, men and women are equal and both can be ministers in God's work. I'm not uh, preempting ordination of women here. That is another issue. And uh, another principle in Christian discipleship that was highlighted in Luke was that ministry is not only a full-time ministerial work with Jesus. Or in our today's context, 
not only a, a full-time ministerial work in the ministry of the church, organized church. And uh, Dr. Ragui also pointed out uh, last night, and also it's here, that uh, when uh, the demoniac who was healed, uh, you know, uh, begged Jesus to, so that he could uh, follow him, but Jesus said, go home. So that ma that's why, uh, that means that uh, some people, you know, were called to the full-time ministry, but some people will, were told to ministry in their homes, in their neighborhood, in their community. And uh, here, Rick, uh, another, another call, it was about the call of a rich young ruler to, the, to discipleship. Okay? And uh, uh, I don't want to, uh, to read the details. I just want to point out the principles. Most likely, the principle here is that our love, because I think this is not uh, normative uh, to sell everything that you possess, but most likely the principle here is that our love for Jesus and our fellow men should be paramount over our love for ourselves. And one thing more, Jesus most likely wanted to break down the young ruler's selfish character. And it seems that Jesus also wanted his disciples to be unencumbered with worldly things, to be effective and to be fully focused with the gospel ministry. And then Jesus calls Jesus' call to discipleship in Luke most importantly involved preaching the good news of the kingdom and to heal the sick. Preaching and healing are, were always together in Luke and also in Acts. Okay, so and then now the teachings of Jesus. And um, uh, I think uh, I have to go right away to uh, the summary, because it seems to me that uh, my time is uh, short, is now uh, becoming short. So I, I'm, I'm, um, I have here the table, the implementation of Jesus' practices and teachings on discipleship in Acts. And I have there the passages, okay, as you can see there. Okay, I will not read that anymore. I will go right away to the summary here this one uh, because this is now the the answer the answer to the three questions that i pose at the outset of this paper discipleship in east the church in the philippines comparison of jesus apostles and disciples in acts and east the church in the philippines on discipleship now here jesus uh, called people to discipleship and uh, assumingly, I presume that uh, he baptized them to those who repented and taught them and trained them. And then, and then uh, in, uh, in Acts, uh, it was implemented by the disciples. And in the SDA church, uh, also uh, the same. They called people to discipleship, baptize, baptize them, those who repent and taught them in Sabbath school. We have a Sabbath school class, okay. And uh, training is inconsistent if not absent. So that is my observation. Uh, you can argue with me anyway. Jesus gave power and authority to his disciples and he promised the Holy Spirit. And in Acts it was fulfilled. The, the disciples were, and apostles were empowered by the Holy Spirit and they preached with boldness. Is there and then uh, the East Church believed that the Holy Spirit, like that of Pentecost, will be poured out in the latter rain. Okay, in the latter rain. That means they are expecting it in the near future, in the latter rain. But in the interim, in the interim, it seems that it is uh, inconsistent. No, and uh, I think uh, this uh, this. Uh, uh, you know, gap should be filled in. Should be filled in. Now, uh, Jesus' prayer, or Jesus prayed before he chose his disciples and apostles. Same also in Acts. How about in this day church here in the Philippines? Some is they ha churches have revival before evangelistic crusade. They pray before election of officers. Okay, but. Uh, as I observe it, politics is so overwhelming in some conferences and local churches. 
Sometimes even the, the brethren in the local churches uh, fought, uh, especially fought each other, especially during the election, especially the office of the treasurer. And, uh, and then uh, Jesus' uh, discipleship is inclusive, okay? The same in Acts, the same in this day church. And in Jesus' discipleship, some were called into full-time ministry, okay? And the same in Acts, and the same also in the SDA church. Of course, with the difference that uh, we have now a centralized tithing with salary. And Jesus' teachings involve blessedness, rejoicing, in, rejoicing in, even in sufferings, I think also in Acts and in his day church today, sometimes, okay? And Jesus taught ethics of the kingdom, especially love your enemies. And Dr. Ravien also presented yesterday the bedrock and uh, applied in our lives. Uh, applied in lives, I mean in Acts and in uh, his day church, also the same, but of course uh, with uh, some limitations. And Jesus demands wholehearted obedience and devotion. And uh, in Acts, uh, they stop those who showed half-hearted devotion. Like in, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 5, the, the story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira. And applied by some in the SD church. But the picture, uh, uh, most of uh, the churches, or some churches if not most, are, uh, there is that picture of lukewarmness and heart, half-heartedness. And discipleship involved preaching the gospel, repentance and remission of sins, healing and teaching. It was applied in Acts. How about in, uh, in SD Church today in the Philippines? Applied. But uh, healing became institutionalized, not a part anymore of regular local church life. Teaching is institu institutionalized too. Oh, separate from the local church. In the local church, we have Sabbath school, but I think it is not enough. We need a teaching training ministry that trains member skills in a regular basis in our local churches. Okay, and uh, Jesus' discipleship uh, should exercise faith and live what they preach. Also in Acts, in, uh, in uh, SD Church today, uh, some uh, healing in healing diseases, but not phenomenal like in Acts. Cannot raise the dead. I'm sorry, uh, but I think uh, this is uh, not applicable anymore. This is not normative. And uh, cast out demons. Uh, some of us experience this. And sometimes also manifest lack of faith. And uh, Jesus' teachings on discipleship involves prayer. Okay, this is very explicit in, 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 in Luke and also in Acts. The disciples also uh, uh, implemented this. Okay, but there is an observation is the believers do not... Uh, okay, I'm sorry. There. Uh, is the church in the Philippines should make prayer a part of church life, corporately and individually? Corporately, we have midweek prayer meetings, okay? Week of prayer meetings, week of prayer meetings once a year. But uh, some churches are not as fervent as others. The same is true individually, okay? And uh, Jesus' teachings on discipleship also involves cause. The cost of discipleship, of, uh, which is Jesus above human relations, above life, and above self. These are, these are the costs. And it demands a total commitment. It was presented by Dr. Mergal. And loyalty and devotion. Same in Acts. And in the SDA church, believers do not experience persecution corporately, but individually sometimes. Believers pay the cost of discipleship, but some members are not totally committed and loyal, as uh, presented by Dr. Mergal uh, yesterday. And Jesus' uh, teachings, the last one here, uh, Jesus' teaching on discipleship involves stewardship and implemented in, uh, in Acts. And in his day church, okay, we have ADRA and ACS, 
okay, Adventist Community Service, but the help is not so apparent in local community in a regular basis in some churches and is not comprehensive. Now, based on this comparison, now we are, we are now in the uh, uh, last part. Based on this comparison, it should be noted that the apostles and disciples in the book of Acts implemented the example and teachings of Jesus on discipleship. This the church in the Philippines followed and implements the practices of Jesus, but there are some gaps that should be pointed out in this paper. Number one is the church was inconsistent in training new believers in a regular basis in a local church level because our um, today our paradigm is that uh, the conference, uh, the local conference would train. But it seems to me that uh, the most effective way is uh, it should be in the local church level and it should be uh, incorporated in the local church ministry in a, in a regular basis. And the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit like that at Pentecost seems to be lacking in the East, East Day Church in the Philippines. And in choosing leaders, they sometimes were influenced by worldly politics style in choosing leaders. Okay, before the election, they have already their own uh, lineup of who will be the president, executive treasurer, and all the directors. Uh, another faction also has their own lineup. So, is the church also dichotomized healing and teaching ministry? The healing ministry is not anymore part of the local church ministry. As for teaching, although there is a teaching ministry in the church through Sabbath school class but it lacks a curriculum on training new believers. And some is the church members do not live in full loyalty and devotion to Jesus. Some do not also live according to the teachings on the sermon on the plain and uh, on the mount in Matthew. Some is the church members display lack of faith too and also lukewarm in most aspects of church life. And some is the churches do not make prayer as a way of life either corporately and individually. Lastly, the SD Church in the Philippines lack consistent ministry on helping the poor, the widow, the other marginalized societies. These churches are not known for social advocacy in a regular basis. So, uh, the conclusion and recommendation. This study found out that Jesus' discipleship involved many areas in his practices and teachings. The disciples, apostles in the book of Acts implemented Jesus' Discipleship, examples and teachings in Luke, and as a result, the church was very effective in fulfilling the mission of the Lord. However, based on the observation of the author of this paper, is the church in the Philippines lack the implementation of Jesus' discipleship, examples and teachings as of today? As a result, is the church in the Philippines is not as effective, as alive, as healthy, spiritually compared to the, to the church in the book of Acts? And uh, here are some recommendations of this paper. Number one, uh, for the East Day Church in the Philippines, make its local church a training center. I think Mrs. White also uh, mentioned this one, that uh, our local church should be a training center for new believers on a regular basis. Number two, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit should be our top priority, the top priority of the church agenda. Okay, and uh, prayer, number three, prayer should be a part of church, church life in a regular basis. The churches should have uh, prayer groups or uh, who pray regularly together. And uh, number four, neutralize worldly politics uh, style in election of church leaders. And number five, healing and teaching ministry should be part of local church ministry in a regular basis. And it should make a curriculum for training new and even old members of the church. The church should uh, nurture members so that they grow and mature, so that they become loyal and totally devoted to the Lord. And the last one, the church should balance evangelism and social advocacy. And I think uh, social advocacy should be uh, evangelism in itself. Social advocacy should be considered as part of the gospel proclamation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Agustin, for a very nice presentation. Uh, if there are questions, you can raise your hand, and we can go to your place. Dr. Agustin is willing to answer your questions. 
here we have one question. The microphone is going to you. Check, check. Thank you, Dr. Augustine. Um, you mentioned that the training that should be done in local churches, which I'm very interested in learning about. Um, can you mention just how you would say that Jesus and the disciples trained in the New Testament, and can we actually take that model in the same way? Because I don't think they had classrooms, you know, and we can't actually live with our church members for three years. So I, my question is, can you give examples of what the church can do now based on these examples by Jesus and the disciples for training members in a local church? Just a simple example or curriculum that you would recommend. Um, thank you for that uh, very nice question. Uh, the, the focus of my paper is just to present the existing problem and also recommendations on uh, the solution. As far as uh, the curriculum of uh, in training uh, these new members in the church, I think we should go to the expert. I think the graduate school uh, uh, professors, uh, expert in uh, curriculum and instruction, can do this. Okay, so we can uh, actually because we have uh, different spiritual gifts, we can probably employ these uh, experts in uh, you know uh, modeling or in. Uh, Constructing this curriculum in the church together with, uh, of course, with uh, with uh, academic uh, exp uh, experts in in missions and ministry of our uh, churches or seminaries. Okay, and also it should be uh, also I think uh, be it should include I mean the the, the field pastors. You know, and uh, conference leaders to formulate this uh, curriculum in our local churches, and I think it should be a part of uh, our ministry in the church. I think in a personal ministry or in the Sabbath school ministry, or church ministry, or what. But uh, my point is that uh, this should be a consistent uh, curriculum or training with a curriculum in our local church. Okay, and. Uh, it should be intentional, and it should be uh, locally based, and, and what I mean local church, because what we have today uh, are from the local conferences, and uh, it's sometimes only once a year, and uh, sometimes it doesn't have follow up, and, and the churches also do not follow up the training, so it just uh, dies down. Dr. Son, and then after that, oh, Dr. Ravi. Thank you, Dr. Augustine, for this uh, very nice uh, presentation and very relevant one. And the topic of discipleship is uh, uh, a part of church ministry based on the New Testament studies, I understand. It's a little far from my own area, but I'm always wondering and I don't have the answer yet. Uh, when we talk about the discipleship, usually we focus on discipleship. But it is, uh, for me, I understand the existence of a disciple presupposes the existence of a master. So we usually talk about discipleship but uh, we don't talk about mastership too much. No master, no disciple, actually. So when I see the topic making disciples, it's based on the New Testament, I think. But whose disciples is that? When we make disciples, do we make our disciples or the Christ disciples? So that is uh, my, what, what, what is uh, uh, your understanding as a New Testament scholar? When Jesus commanded us, make disciples, does it mean uh, we should make our own disciples or 
to add his disciples. Yeah. It, it, it is very not easy to understand for yeah. me, actually. Thank you for that uh, question, Dr. Song. And uh, it's a really a difficult question. Okay, but in my uh, uh, understanding, um, Jesus, uh, deci Jesus discipled his uh, followers. Okay, he uh, trained them, he taught them uh, to be like him, to to uh, to work like him, to live like him. That means uh, the disciples of Jesus uh, reflected his uh, character and also his style of uh, working and also his teachings. And uh, the, the, the command of Jesus in Matthew, it, it was not found in Luke. That's why I did not include it here. In Matthew, go and make disciples of all nations. I believe that uh, discipleship is always to point to Jesus as the master and we are all just disciples. We reproduce disciples not uh, to reproduce ourselves but in the first place to reproduce Jesus Christ in the lives of those uh, converts that we have. Okay. They are not our disciples. Jesus' okay. disciples. Mm -hmm. So we are not masters. But yes. As you mentioned, That's right. some <laughs> church members and some churches, mm -hmm. administrators or teachers, mm -hmm. want to be masters. And they are, they are, are the working as masters. That's the problem, according to your presentation, right? It I seems. think it is not, I haven't uh, put it there. I just, yeah, yeah, but, but what, <laughs> what I just put it there is that uh, uh, it was Jesus who uh, yeah. became a master to his uh, yeah, disciples. I did, so not say that, for, for, for I did not say that the disciples yeah. would become masters of their disciples. For me, one of the problems is uh, the, that the, when we uh, emphasize uh, making disciples, some church members even some pastors understand we should make our own disciples. Then, they, that then it means we should be masters. But there's only one master. Yeah, that's think. right. Yeah. I agree with you, actually. So I did not uh, actually uh, put it there that uh, we become masters of our disciples because uh, only Jesus is the only master and we just reproduce the master. Jesus Christ in the lives of our disciples, of the disciples in the church. Yes, Dr. Ragri. Uh, allow me to stand so I can see. I have talked a lot last night. Some of you were not here. But uh, just an observation from the floor question. Of course, last night I said that if we follow Jesus and if we make disciples of Jesus, we cannot go wrong. That's a Christ model of discipling. Christ is the guru, the master, after which we have to follow. Uh, talking about our sister here, um, the training program. You know, I just had one Bible study this morning, and I'm just excited to share this. Uh, I have been going through with the Bible study with one of our ex-former uh, barrio captain. Uh, and by the way, he's going to be baptized next week. So, okay, uh, next week he will be baptized. The wife who was baptized last uh, November is now the Robinson Land Development Corporation uh, director. So we are happy for that. You know, I want to thank uh, Pastor Augustine for the the methodology of uh, discipling. First of all, our commitment, we must be with the Lord in order to disciple others to Christ. It is inevitable that 
if you want to teach others, you must be already in that capacity. You must be in the Lord to be able to teach about Jesus. Otherwise, you will only be, a, a, you know, a noise. Number two, you talk about prayer. I think that is inevitable. It's a core values that we have to integrate. You pray about the person you are going to share. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So ask the Lord to help you, carry you to the place where you need to share the love of Christ. Number three, you know, don't simply say, let him come to me and I will share. Jesus, Ellen G. White talking about, you know, evangelism or personal ministry. You who have become a child of God, a member of the church, must go from door to door, house to house, and look for the sinner. Don't simply expect, oh, well, let them come to me and I will share. It is our duty to go and share. The Lord, if you are willing to go, the Lord, if you are willing to share, the Lord will provide the souls that you need to share. Then after that, you know, you talk about the how do we get the training. Uh, our church, fortunately, as far as I'm concerned, has many materials. In fact, I'm using right now uh, Explorer, the lesson study. It has 24 lessons. And the con local conference has made it so easy, question, answer, question, answer. And so, you know, the one whom I'm, who have decided this morning, I was going through three lessons this morning. We just have to go through that lesson. He reads the question, and then the answer is right there. You just give them the answer, and he opens the Bible. We are just there to say, okay, you, you know, you, just being with him, showing concern, Wanting him to learn the lesson, that, that makes the matter. Then they, they just catch the fire. And that's how uh, we do. So the materials are there. We don't have to go through formal training. Just materials are there in the conference. And by the way, this is done for local setting. On one column, you have English. And another column, you have Tagalog. So both English and Tagalog is in the same book. So that kind of materials is available, both by the conference and also prepared by the general conference, different, different uh, lesson study. So those are the things that helps in the, in the uh, discipling program. Sadly, the time is enough. Uh, we know you have some questions? Just write it down in a paper. Please give it to our, our, our team, and they will manage your, your question. Thank you, Dr. Agustin, for the presentation. Give, us, give him a applause. On behalf of the IS Asian Theological Society, I would like to present this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Alfredo Agustin for his presentation of the discipleship in Luke Acts, Jesus' teachings and practice, implementation in Luke Acts and the SDA local church today. Thank you so much. And this is a small token of appreciation. And also, Dr. Agustin is the academic sponsor of the IS Asian Theological Society. He contributes a lot to our forum, especially when we choosing the uh, topic of the making disciples. He uh, make much uh, contributions uh, to our meetings, our discussions, and uh, make this uh, success of the forum. Thank you so much, thank you.